Genesis chapter 5, when you get that, say amen. Amen. And verse 24. Genesis chapter 5. And verse 24. Praise the Lord. Read this out loud to me that got it on the screen as well. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Verse 24 or 25 says, And Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. And then the Bible says in verse 26, And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. Many you know that's a lot of years to be having babies. Amen. And the next verse says, For 969 years, and he died. We started this text out by saying, And Enoch walked with God. Can somebody say amen today? And Enoch walked with God. Amen. The Bible also tells us over in Hebrews chapter 11, if you'll take a moment and turn there, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. Hallelujah. You love the word, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Keep digging, keep digging. It's in there somewhere. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of you who are yet coming in, God bless you. Good to have you coming in with us today. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. All right, let's read this out loud. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And so I'm preaching today for a few minutes on walking with God. Would you bow your heads with us, everybody? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your presence and power and spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Lord, for touching our children today and blessing them, dear Lord, with the word of God in their hearts and lives, Father. We thank you for what they experienced yesterday, Lord. We thank you, dear God, that the gospel of Jesus Christ was sown in their lives, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless them in every way. Father, we pray healing over them. We pray deliverance over them. We pray blessing over them. We pray, God, that your divine will will be done in their lives and in the lives of their parents, God. Father, we pray your anointing upon this service, upon the preaching of your word, dear God, the hearing and doing of it, Father. May we be encouraged by the word of God. May you speak to us and be a, this word be a blessing to everyone in this house, Father. We commit this to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say that. Amen. 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 Look at somebody, shake their hand, smile at them, give them a hug. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you can be seated. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. As Christians, we are to walk with God. As Christians, we're to have a close walk with God. We're not to walk behind God. We're certainly not to walk ahead of God, in front of God, but we're to walk with God. And we even know there's a difference between walking before Him, behind Him, and walking with Him. Enoch walked with God. And you and I as believers are to walk with God. We're not to get behind, but we're to stay beside. We're not to get ahead of Him, but we're to stay beside. We're to walk with God. And let God lead us and direct us and carry us on and carry us forward. Can somebody say amen? amen. The Bible says of Enoch in our text that he walked with God and was not because God took him. Some have described this as saying that he didn't walk so closely to God that he got closer to God's house than he was his house. And God just said, just come on, and he translated him on to glory. I don't know how that all took place, but the Bible is firm and clear that he didn't walk with God. This is pre-Jesus. This is pre-Holy Ghost baptism. This is pre-being born again. This is pre-all the blessings of God that we have. But Enoch chose to walk with God. Walking 
with God is a decision that we make and then we continue to walk with him. Can somebody say praise God today? Amen. We can make a choice to walk with God and we can make a choice to stop walking with God. We can make a choice to walk closely with God and we can make a choice to walk afar from God. But child of God, when you walk close to God, some wonderful things happen in your life. Some great blessings happen in your life. Amen. There's revelation that comes from God when you walk close to Him. Everybody won't understand it. Everybody won't understand you when you're close to God. Amen. They'll say that you are too radical. They'll say that you are too crazy about church. You're too crazy about religion. Child of God, we're not so crazy about church and we're not so crazy about religion. But can I get a witness from somebody that's crazy about Jesus? A hold your hand up and say, Praise God. If you're crazy about Jesus today, how do you even walk with God? If any can walk with God, you and I can walk with God. And we can walk close to God. And we can be so close to Him that we can feel His presence in our lives every day. Amen. When we drift away from God, we are the loser. When we get to stay behind and fall behind, amen, every one of us are the losers. But God wants us to walk close to Him. Amen. You know, in the Bible, the Bible tells us over in Psalms chapter 23, amen, when David is talking about the Lord is my shepherd, down about verse 5 in that chapter, the Bible says, David said, He anointeth my head with oil. When we're close to God, He anoints our lives. Our lives are anointed by God every day. Hey, but if you understand that you can come to Him every day and be anointed. You can come to Him in the morning and be anointed. You can come to Him all through the day and be anointed by Him. He anoints our head with oil. Anybody a sheep in the pasture of the Lord, hold your hand up and say, praise God. I am a sheep in the pasture of the Lord. And as such, He anoints my life with the oil of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness from somebody today? You know something about the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is upon your life. It makes you different than other people when the Lord anoints you. He anoints you for service. He anoints you for ministry. He anoints you for witness. He anoints you for business. He anoints you for family. He anoints you for as a husband, as a father. He anoints you as a wife, as a mother. He anoints us and his anointing makes all the difference in the world. Can somebody say amen today? Amen. Years ago, Ray H. Hughes, a three-time general overseer in the Church of God, preached a message all across the world, all around the world. The anointing makes the difference, and it really does make the difference. It changes us. Amen. It elevates us. It edifies us. It strengthens us. The anointing makes the difference. Amen. When David talked about how that the shepherd anoints the sheep's head with oil, he anointed the sheep's head with oil for three reasons. When you do study on this, he anoints it for bugs. He anoints it for butts. And I'll get to that in a moment. And he anoints it, child of God, for cuts. In other words, the Bible tells us that God, the Heavenly Father, and the shepherd of his, of his sheep anoints the head of the sheep, anoints our heads. We could say for bugs. When the shepherd would come and pour the anointing oil upon the head of the sheep every single day, amen, he would pour that oil upon them. Amen. And he would make sure that that oil would run down in their nose. This is not going to be uh, too respectable or too received very well. It's going to be a little bit disgusting. But he made sure that that oil that he anointed their head with went down in the nose of the sheep. Amen. And when it went down in the nose of the sheep, it went down in the nose of the sheep to keep bugs from going into the nose of the sheep. These bugs would go into the nose of the sheep. That sounds awful. Amen. And when they would go into the nose of the sheep. Amen. They would bury down in. Amen. Even into the skull of the sheep and into the brain of the sheep and could literally kill the sheep. Amen. With those bugs down in their nose, the sheep would beat their heads against the ground or beat their head. Amen. Against the tree. We're trying to get these bugs out. Does anybody ever have any trouble with some fowl that try to come and lodge in your brain? I'm not talking about natural bugs, but I'm talking about demon spirits. I'm talking about spirits that come and try to confuse you. Spirits that come and try to trouble your mind. Anybody ever had that kind of trouble? But amen, child of God, we as his sheep, we recognize 
the shepherd of the sheep, anoint the head of the sheep. Amen. So that anointing will keep us free. That anointing will keep us blessed. If we get out from under the anointing, we get in dangerous territory. But as long as we stay under the anointing, amen, the devil cannot take us away. Can somebody say praise God? The devil cannot torment us. The devil cannot defeat us. But we stay under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's for everybody, every one of us, everybody in this church, everybody outside this church who was born again. Amen. God wants you to be anointed. God wants you walking in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe you can have that today? Yeah. Do you believe you can walk in that anointing today? Yeah. Amen. But not only was the sheep anointed for bugs, the sheep was anointed for butts. That butt may not be what you're thinking about. But can you know sheep will butt one another? Sheep were butt with their heads one another. And that anointing oil was placed on the head of the sheep so that when they would begin to butt against another sheep, amen, it would just slip off. It would not have any effect. And you know, in the church, amen, sometimes authoritative spirits are trying to get control of us. And then there'll be those that will feel like they're more important than somebody else. And they root for authority. They butt for authority. They try to work their way in, amen, for authority, for control. But does anybody understand that the Bible lets us know that we are to prefer one another in the Lord? We are to prefer our brother. And there's a hierarchy in the church. But it's according to God. God puts one up. And somebody help me preach right here. And takes one down. Amen. All that we receive from God is because of him. Every time God puts somebody in a position in the church and in the kingdom of God, it is because he entrusts us with that position. It's not because we're so educated or smart or handsome or pretty. And that we are we're the greatest one in the whole in the whole kingdom of God. Everything is rotating around us. No child of God is because God has put gifts in us. And the same God that puts those gifts in us but wants us for service. He puts his anointing upon us. Amen. Child of God, so we'll stay humble. So we'll recognize who's in charge. And you know, it's not about me. It's not about you. But it is about him. He is in charge. He is the Lord and Master. Can somebody say amen in this house today? Hallelujah. And throughout the body, amen, it's the anointing that keeps us in place. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that causes the church to work succinctly, to work together, amen, as we should. Amen, not any high ups and low people, amen, but everybody the same. It has been said and it is true, amen, that the ground at the foot of the cross is level. Amen, it's level for rich people, it's level for poor people, it's level for educated people, it's level level for those who are uneducated. It's level for the popular. It's level for the unpopular. It's level for the righteous. It's level for the unrighteous. Everybody finds the cross ground is level. Hallelujah. And the anointing of God will help you and I to stay where we need to stay in the work of God so everybody can operate in their gifts according to what he places within us. Can somebody say amen? But not only is it for bugs and bus, so we'll not try to take authority over somebody else. But it's also, John, God, for cuts. Amen. The sheep, amen, would cut themselves in this desert area or this wilderness area. Wherever they might be, they would cut themselves. And so when the shepherd pulled that oil in, he poured that oil in for healing. And you know there's value in walking close to God. There's value in walking with God and being where God can take care of us. Amen. God's not going to cast us aside, or God's not going to push us aside and tell us he doesn't want us. But child of God, oftentimes it's you and I, amen, that we allow God to go on ahead and we stay back. We allow God to move in one direction and we don't go in that direction. Amen. God is moving forward and if we'll move forward with him, we'll find the anointing will be everything and be sufficient for anything that we might need. Can somebody say amen? That anointing will be good for bugs that may come against us. That anointing will be good for the butts that may come against us. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost will be good for those cuts.
us. Sometimes we get cut, amen, unaware. Sometimes we get cut accidentally. Sometimes we get cut by those, amen, that ought not to be cutting us. But no matter what, whether it's friend or foe, whether it's an enemy or a friend, if we get cut or disappointed or hurt, there is the anointing of the Holy Ghost that will be poured upon us to heal up those hurts. Can somebody say amen in the day? Amen. When God heals up those hurts, we've got to let go of that. We can't hold on to that. Amen. There's too many divisions in too many places because we're still holding on to past hurts. But if you've been, if you've been touched by God and you've been healed by God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost has been poured on that hurt, then child of God is taken care of. Amen. We can go back and pick it up, but we don't need to go back and pick it up. We need to leave it alone. We need to let it stay where it is. Can somebody say amen and give God a praise and a shout in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise God, everybody. And give God a shout to them. Hallelujah. Amen. This walk with God is the walk of all walks. Amen. It's the walk that God has privileged you and I to walk in, to walk with God, the creator of the universe, the most powerful person, amen, in eternity, to walk with God, amen, God has given us that privilege, amen, when we're walking with him, it is the walk of all walks, it's the greatest walk in the world, sometimes they talk about the red carpet, and walking on the red carpet, this is better than walking on anybody's red carpet, when you know you're walking with God, can I get a witness? from somebody if you know what I'm talking about is true. Amen. But this walk with God, amen, it leads to a walk, amen, on a street of gold. The Bible tells us in Revelation, amen, that I have not seen and ear hath not heard, neither has there in the heart of man those things which God hath prepared for those, amen, that love him. Anybody looking for what God has prepared for you looking to find out, amen, while we look at the scripture, we find out that not only, amen, are, is, is a, this a place where we do not fully understand everything about it, a place where we cannot fully comprehend all about it, but child of God, God has revealed some things to us in the word of God about this place that we're walking with God to. Can somebody say praise God? Amen. In fact, if you've got your Bible, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 with me, everybody. And I'm not even sure I sent that back to media, but I really feel like the Lord wants you and I to take a little closer look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Somebody say praise God when you get it. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, but as it is written... Oftentimes we leave that off as I did a moment ago when I quoted this passage. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This tenth verse says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now again, notice verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But as it is written, and then verse 10, go ahead, in verse 10 it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches of for the Spirit searcheth all the things, yea, the deep things of God, but it is written. How many of you know where the written revelation is? Hold your Bible up if you know this is the written revelation. Amen. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the church here, and he says, But as it is written, I have not seen, ear heard, neither the heart of man has received everything that God has prepared for them, but it's been revealed to us according to this 10th verse by the Spirit, His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And make you understand, child of God, that we've got the written word of God that reveals some things, amen, about our future, about where we're going. In 
back in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 21. Here is where we get this scripture. For there is a street of gold in the new Jerusalem. Amen. This is something that boggles our minds. We can't fully comprehend this. Amen. But we're not in the dark. Amen. When it says, I have not seen and ear hath not heard, neither hath it in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them. Remember again, the first part of that text says, but as it is written. Where is it written? It's written in the Word of God. And those of us who walk close to God and stay in the Word of God, we get revelation from God. Can somebody say amen? There is a new city coming down. The new Jerusalem is coming down. And the Bible tells us it has a street of gold. We often reference amen and say streets of gold. But here it says in Revelation 21 and 21 that there is a street of gold. And we're headed to that city where there is a street of gold and walls of jasper and gates of pearl. So child God, my other people don't have a clear understanding and almost no understanding of what God has prepared for us. God has revealed it to us through the written word of God. Can somebody say praise God? Amen. Give God a hand back and give God a praise in this place today. Hallelujah. Would you just read this scripture with me today? The Bible says Revelation 21 and 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was a one pearl. And the street of that city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. So I don't know whether all the streets in heaven, amen, from a young boy, I've been told all the streets of heaven are gold. I'm not sure about that, but I do know this is absolutely true. The street of gold in the new Jerusalem is a reality that you and I have already received knowledge about. Amen. We've got this. Amen. Our ear is hearing this. Our eye is seeing this. It's entering into our hearts. We are not dumbfounded about what God has prepared for the righteous. Can somebody clap their hands and give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. And that's where we're we'll walking to. But can you know as we walk with God, amen, there is revelation along the way. As we walk to God, there is heaven to go in. Can somebody say praise God? In other words, you and I, as we walk close to God, we've got heaven to go to heaven in. It's not just about what's going to happen after a while. Hey, but if you understand, amen, that God wants you and I to be blessed now. He wants you and I to enjoy the goodnesses of God now. Can somebody say amen and give God a praise and give God a shout in the house of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This walking with God is something that immediately implies movement. This walking with God is something that immediately implies progress. Amen. When we're walking with God, we are moving forward with God. Amen. I can say it like this. There is no standing still with God. Amen. You don't find a place in God and you just kind of lodge there and you don't move forward anymore. You don't grow anymore. You don't learn anymore. You don't get any greater anointing or any greater revelation. But when you walk with God, you're moving forward. It implies forward progress. Can somebody say amen? Now, I know several years ago, let me say, let me say this first. The Bible does tell us that God said, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. He said to Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? And the Bible tells us that having done all to stand, stand therefore. In other words, when you don't know what to do, just stand still. Amen. Don't try to move out ahead of God. Don't get behind God. Just stand still. God's got it under control. God's not trying to figure it out. God's not standing still trying to figure it out. He's standing still because sometimes it's necessary for you and I to stand still with God. But how many of you understand when you stand still with God, you're not losing ground? When you stand still with God, you're still progressing. Can somebody say amen? And it's when I try to move out ahead of God or I try to fall behind God, I'm talking to somebody. That's when I lose ground. And then when I try to move out ahead of God, I make a mistake. I get the wrong house. I get the wrong car or too much car. I get the friend I don't need to have as my friend. I get in the territory I don't need to be in. Am I 
making sense to anybody. Sometimes when God stands still, you and I just need to recognize that we need to stand still as well. If you're banging up against something, we're praying about a job. Sometimes we get the wrong job because we don't wait on God. Because we don't stand still with God. The truth is, if I try to move when God doesn't move, that's when I get into danger. That's when I get into disaster. That's when I get into trouble. That's when I lose ground. If God is standing still, then I think I'm going to make up some time. And so I'm going to run out there. Tell them God, I may move to the right when I should have moved to the left. I may move, move forward when God would have me to stand still. Amen. I may try to do some things that God did not say to so many times. Amen. We have those who speak to us and talk with us. And through the years, this has happened over and over again in counseling. Pastor, I got into this situation. I got into that situation. And one of the first things I want to ask them is, did God tell you to do that? No, but Mama told me to do it. Mama is not God. Mama may be godly, but Mama is not God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Did God tell you to know? But my friend told me to do that. Your friend is not God. Can somebody say amen? No, 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 no. God didn't tell me to do it, but my counselor told me to do that. Your counselor is not God. Oh, somebody needs to hear me preach. Not even your pastor is God. God is God all by himself. Can somebody say amen? And anytime somebody else tries to usurp the authority and power and position of God in our life, it's going to get us in trouble. Amen? And then when God says stand still, just stand still. Don't move. Don't take an inch step forward, a baby step forward. Just stand still. Just wait on God. But pastor, I need to get this thing done. Let me tell you, when we do it in our own strength, our own strength will fail us. If somebody's talking in my ear and telling me I need to do this, but I don't have the peace of God about it, I don't need to move out and do that. Can somebody say amen to that? Need to wait on the Lord. Can somebody say praise God today? Somebody, and I won't call their name, my good. I won't call their name, but somebody years ago <clears throat> felt like that they were supposed to go to the mission field. And so they went to the mission field. And they got on the mission field and found out that they had missed God. Amen. And what they did was, they didn't stay on the mission field. They apologized. They made it good. And they came back to the States and started working in ministry in the States and became a successful pastor in the church of God. Too many people get out ahead of God and because they want to save face, amen, they stay in that place. They keep doing that thing. They know they miss God. Child God, please hear the pastor. They, when you realize you miss God, back up. Go back to where God is and let God take care of you. Can somebody say amen in this house? Every young person needs to hear this. Every elder person needs to hear this. If you find yourself ahead of God, don't keep going. Stop. Because the further you go, the further you go away from God, who is standing still at the moment, who is waiting at the moment, amen, come back to where you left God, you'll find him exactly where you left him. If somebody say amen, and he'll walk with you, and he'll take you home, and everything that you lost, you will make it up, because God makes up time. God is supernatural, and this walk with him is a supernatural walk. What may take years, I feel the Spirit of God, what may take years in the natural will only take months in the Spirit. What may take months in the natural will only take weeks in the Spirit. My, what might only take weeks in the natural will only take days in the Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? God is the only one that can redeem time. God is the only one that can empower you and I to redeem time. So when we find ourselves in a mess, amen, we we'll stop, turn around, go back, reconnect with God, and walk with God. Pick up back your hands and give God a praise if you believe that. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we go. Michael Jackson made famous what was called the Moonwalk Dance. Amen. It was published in a, on a record label. And amen. I can't Billy Jean. 
just popped in my brain when Michael was doing the Billy Jean uh, article or album. Amen. He made famous the moonwalk. You know what the moonwalk is? The moonwalk is. Hallelujah. I actually thought about getting somebody <laughs> to, uh, to show us the white man can't do a little more good. I mean, it looks like you're walking forward, but you're not walking forward, you're walking backwards. And you see, I tell you, I can't do it. Shavon is over here practicing right now. He's rehearsing right now. Stand up, son. Come on, come on, stand up. To your help. Hallelujah. Can you do it? You can't do it, Stephen. Can you do it? Why? You can't do it. Stephen, you can do it. Is there anybody in the house that can do the moonwalk? You bunch of cowards. I hope you're all telling me the truth. I hope you're not lying to the preacher on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Bishop Green, can you do the moonwalk? I thought he was going to ask you. I know he can't do it. But the moonwalk is you're making a movement like you're moving forward. But you're not moving forward. Oh, I'm doing it now. You're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And Michael Jackson, he made it famous. And everybody, even white folk, we're trying to do that dance, the moonwalk. You know what the moonwalk was called before it was called the moonwalk? It was called the backslide. Think about it. That was the dance name for it before Michael changed the name to the moonwalk. It was called the backslide. And what Michael did was he just perfected this dance move and everybody began to do it. And that was just a dance move. And a dance move is one thing. But man, child of God, do you understand there are people today that are doing the moonwalk on God? Amen. They're doing the moonwalk in the physical. Amen. When God says, let's move forward, instead of moving forward, they're moving backwards. They're not moving forward with God. God wants every one of us to move forward with Him. Amen. To not do the moonwalk on Him, but to grab a hold of God and keep moving forward. That I make a sense of to anybody. Not just looking like that we're moving forward and we're not moving forward. Does anybody give this a big <laughs> Not looking like we're moving forward, but child of God, we are actually moving forward in the Lord. Last Sunday, there was nine people in the house amen, that answered the call of God to come to the altar and be saved or reclaimed. Can somebody praise God for these nine that came to God last Sunday? Hallelujah. Child of God, amen. And then on Sunday night, two of these were young ladies that came to the service on Sunday night and came to the altar to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They came seeking for the baptism. Of the Holy Ghost. How are you doing there, darling? Praise God. And Shalika was one of them. And Allison was another one that came down here seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Having no child about that's the way to keep walking forward and not walk backwards. Can somebody say amen? I prayed all this week for these nine that came forward last week to become stable in God, to become mature in God, to walk close with God. Amen. The way that I I do that, the way that you do that, the way these young people do that, and others in the house who came forward and rededicated their lives to God is to walk closely with Him, to walk in the anointing with Him, to walk in His presence. Get somebody clap their hands and give God a praise and give God a shout. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, when you walk with God, amen, you walk with God. There are some things that you can't have. You can't have sin. You have to say no to sin. Say that, everybody. You have to say no to temptation. You have to say no to some friends. Amen. 
every friend that maybe you have right now cannot walk with you while you're walking close to God. Can I tell somebody, God is calling for some leaders today. He's calling for some young people to be leaders. Amen. Amen. There is a commercial, amen, on television. Amen. It is a truck commercial. And the voice, as the truck is going down the road, the voice says, amen, if you're not the lead dog, the, the scenery never changes. Amen. Do you understand what the message of that commercial is? If you're not in the front, if you're not leading, the scenery never changes. You're always looking at somebody's backside. I don't want to look at somebody's backside. I want to be in the front. I want to be in the front walking with God. And if God is calling some people to get out of line and get to the front and be a leader, God is calling some leaders in this house, some young people to be leaders of other young people. Can somebody say amen today? Amen. You know, I, I don't know how to dance very good. You saw I couldn't even do a backwards walk up here. I, I don't know how to dance very good. In fact, the, the last time I danced, I believe, was at my daughter's wedding when I did the father of the bride's dance with the bride. I think that was the last time I danced, not, not in the Holy Ghost, but you know what I'm saying, a physical dance. But this much I do know about dancing, dance moves and doing dancing, if you're dancing with a couple, somebody has to lead. And the other one has to follow. Can somebody say amen for you? Amen. In this dance that we're doing with God, God is leading. And God is a good dance teacher. Can somebody say amen? He is leading in this dance that we're doing with him. And as he leads and you and I follow, not only is he dancing with us, he's also teaching us how to dance. In other words, he's teaching us how to lead. And then God does not save us and leave us. God saves us and equips us. God saves us and develops us. Am I making sense to anybody in the church house today? God leads us, amen, to teach you and I how to be a leader of others so we can lead others. We can lead, uh, lead others away from sin, lead others away from temptation, lead others away from failure, but lead others away from moral uh, failures. Amen. God is trying to develop every one of us in this house, including young people, to be leaders yeah. and not followers. You are greater than you think. You are better than you think. Amen. God does not sponsor failures. Amen. God sponsors successes. Amen. Amen. I may not be all that I'm going to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Somebody needs to say that out loud today. Say, I'm not what I'm going to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Say it one more time. I'm not what I'm going to be. But I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I'm going to be. But I'm not what I used to be. Does anybody know you're changed? We're good creatures in Jesus Christ. Amen. We're something that's never been before. We're someone that's never been before. You are unique. Amen. Everybody in this house, God has ordained you and put his hand upon you for a purpose and for a design. Amen. So you can be a leader. So you can lead others away from hell. Last Sunday's message was a very uh, tough message to preach. It was a very tough message to deliver. And this past week I commented about how that, amen, not much preaching is done on hell, including this preacher. But hell is a reality that we must avoid. And child of God, if we're going to avoid it, we have to walk with God. Can somebody say amen? Walk with God. Clap your hands and give God a praise and give God a shout. We have to walk with him, not behind him. We have to walk with him. Can somebody say praise God today? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us the steps of a good man are the order of the Lord. That's Psalms 37 and verse 23. In Psalms 37 and verse 23, again, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. Amen. Listen to me. In Psalms 37 and verse uh, 37 and verse 23, when the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his ways. That first he 
there in the new, in the uh, King James, as you see here on the screen now. That, that first he and he delights in his ways. That first he in the King James, Amen, has a little. H, a lowercase h, and not a capital H. But in most of the translations, amen, in the early manuscripts, that is not, amen, and I'm talking about the manuscripts that were actually capitalizing and putting in punctuation. Earlier manuscripts had no punctuation. Earlier manuscripts had no capitalization. They didn't have any of the punctuations in there and no kind of understanding, amen. But here, later, the manuscripts begin to have punctuation and they begin to have capitals so they have a better understanding. In those little manuscripts, amen, when this scripture is translated and the scripture is given to us and it says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he delighted in his ways. That little h, that lowercase h on that key there is not a lowercase h in many of the translations and in many of the little manuscripts, but it's a capital H. In other words, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he God delighted in his ways. Amen. That man that's hearing the steps of God, hearing the orders of God, hearing the directions of God, and being obedient to the direction of God, it causes God to delight in all his ways. It causes God to smile. It causes God to be pleased with us. The steps of a good man. Anybody good in here? By the grace of God, hold your hand up if you're good by the grace of God. I know the Bible says no man is good, no not one. I'm not good in my my own self, but I'm good by the grace of the Almighty God. The steps of a good man, good by the grace of the Almighty God. His steps are all of God. What that literally is saying is his steps are directed by God. His steps are firm by God. Amen. His steps are sure by God. In other words, the steps of a good man, amen, are ordered by God in that he has an orderly life. He has a life that is under God's direction. Amen. He is doing what the Lord would have him to do. And God delights in all his ways. Can somebody say praise God? This man that walks close to God, this man that has his steps ordered by God, is consistent. This man is faithful. Am I making sense to anybody? Anybody know anybody like that? Anybody like that today? You, my God is God is your helper. You are faithful to God. You're walking with God and your life pleases him. Can somebody say praise God? God's not the author of confusion. So we can blame it on God when we say it's God, but it's confusion, it's not God. It's not God holding our lives. Amen. Just because it feels good does not make it right. That's right. Amen. Amen. The United States government is legalizing a lot of things that are not right. That's right. Amen. And we need to pray for God to send revival to America. Can somebody say Amen. We need to pray for God to send revival to America. From the White House to the church house to my house, we need to pray for God to send revival to America. And somebody say, Praise God. Just because it's legal does not make it right. Can somebody say, Praise God? Just because it feels good and everybody else is doing it, that's an opioid of the devil. Everybody else is doing it. It doesn't make it right. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. But God orders the steps of the righteous, and sometimes those steps go against the grain. Sometimes those steps go contrary to the crowd. Can somebody say amen today? The child of God, those who walk with God never walk alone. Can somebody say praise God? Hallelujah. Billy Joe may not be with you. Bobby Sue may not be with you. Amen. Your other friends that were with you when you were in the world, they may not be with you. But when you walk with God, you do not walk alone. God woo, walks with you. God makes a way. God orders your life. God takes care of you. Can somebody say praise God? In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says this. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And somebody say amen. Amen. The revelator said this in 22 and 13. I am Alpha and Omega. Get me here. The first and the last. 
the beginning and the end. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Amen. The wise man Solomon said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Come on, somebody. And he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. When we're walking with God, God is directing our paths. He's shining the light of Scripture before us so we'll know exactly where to walk and where not to walk. And somebody say amen. Every one of us, we walked into a dark room and couldn't see. But when we pulled out our telephones and hit the flashlight on our telephones, suddenly the room lit up in front of us. And we knew how to maneuver through that dark room. How many know that Jesus Christ shines a light of the Word of God upon our path? And we walk in the light of the Word of God. We're not going to stumble. We're not going to fall. We're not going to slip up. We're not going to trip up. God directs our paths. And we're going to make it all the way. Can somebody say praise God? Real quick. I want to give you three quick points. This is not a whole other sermon. This is just three quick points. Here are steps on how to walk with God. The first step, we're in Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. If you have your Bibles, just flip there real quick. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. The first step is forget the flesh. If you're going to walk with God, forget the flesh. Somebody write this down, forget the flesh. Verses 1 through 7 says, the apostle uh, Paul saying to the Philippians, Finally, my brethren, Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, and thee is not grievous. Verse 2 says, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of consciences. Beware, he says, of these things. For we are the circumcision. Amen. Beware, which worship God in the spirit. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. And rejoice in Christ, Jesus, have and have no confidence in the flesh. If anybody had any reason to have confidence in the flesh, the apostle Paul had a reason to have confidence in the flesh. But Paul said, have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel and of the Benjamin, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal and persecuting the church, touching the, the righteousness which is in the law blameless. Amen. But the seventh verse says, But what things were gained to me, those things I counted, I count a loss for Christ. In other words, child of God, Paul is telling you and I, if we're going to walk with God, the first step we've got to take is we've got to forget the flesh. We've got to forget our accomplishments. We've got to forget our failures. We've got to forget the flesh. Secondly, Paul said, not only forget the flesh, but forget your past. In verses 8 through verse 14, the Bible says, Gave doubtless, and I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I also suffer the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Somebody say, praise God. praise God. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, amen, but righteousness, amen, through Jesus Christ, through faith in Christ, the righteous which is of God by faith. Verse 10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, even were already perfect, but I follow after, I chase after, I come after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Amen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, and we all know the scripture, amen, this one thing I do, amen, I count myself not apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth of those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So if I'm going to walk with God, the first step is i got to forget the flesh. The second step is i got to forget the past. And the third step is i got to forget the attitude of the lost. I've got to forget the attitude of the lost. 
And these next verses, look here what it says in verses 15 through 21. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect or mature, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal it even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Look at the next verse. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. If they're contrary to our example, mark them. Amen. And in verse 18, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And then on through verse 21, whose end is destruction, whose God is flesh, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things. For our conversation, our life is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the final verse, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Can somebody say amen? amen. So if we're going to walk with God, what's the first step? Forget the flesh. If we're going to walk with God, what's the second step? Forget the past. If we're going to walk with God, what's the first step? Third step. Forget the attitude of the lost. I remember growing up and I've heard my daughter make the same comment to her children that my mom made to me when I was growing up, my brother when I was growing up. And we made to our daughter. That, perhaps those of you in this house, your mom and dad may have made the same comment to you. Forget that attitude. You ever heard that before? Forget that attitude. Or drop that attitude. Drop that attitude. The attitude of the world is one of rebellion and resistance to the things of God. And God is saying what our parents said to us. Drop that attitude. Drop the attitude of the world. If I'm going to walk with God, I've got to forget the flesh. I've got to forget the past. And I've got to forget that attitude. I've got a new attitude. I've got an attitude of gratitude. I've got an attitude that gives God praise. That gives God worship. Amen. I'm not the same person I used to be. Those of you who came down here last week and knelt in the altar. Amen. Or rededicated your life to God. Or, or gave your life to God. If you got saved or you were reclaimed. Amen. If whatever you did, something happened in you. Something supernatural happened in you. But how many of you understand that there is an old man that all the time wants to rule? Amen. The old man, Adam, always wants to rule in our life. Just because we get saved does not mean he's dead. But the Bible tells us we have to constantly put him down. We have to constantly forget him and not let him rule in our lives. And I'm making sense to anybody today. Forget the attitude and do what God says do. Walking with God pays great dividends. Walking with God gives great revelation. Walking with God creates greater and greater and greater in our lives. Hand if you want to walk as close to God as you possibly can. Hold your hand up today for the glory of all God. Come on, do that. Amen. Hey, would you stand to your feet, everybody? Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, dear God, that we can walk with you. We can walk in your power. We can walk in your anointing. And like a grandpa and grandma, in the video that we saw that was worshiping you, we can walk in praise. We can walk in glory. We can walk in your presence. Father, in Jesus' name today, God, I pray for those here in this congregation that are lost their backs. I pray you get a hold of their hearts right now. Don't let them leave in this condition. Don't let them leave this sanctuary walking away from you. But oh God, in Jesus' name, let them walk this way and begin walking with you. If there are those, oh God, in this congregation 
that left you behind. When you stopped, they kept walking. Father God, in Jesus' name, speak to their hearts and bring them back to reality. That they might come back and find where you are. Find where you are and take you up again and walk with you afresh. And God, those that came last Sunday and gave their lives to you, and we dedicated their lives to you. Father God, I pray that you today in this house touch them and draw them close to your side. That there'll be leaders in the things of God. There'll be leaders in the ways of God. They'll lead people in righteous. They'll lead their friends and their family and their peers in righteous ways. They'll not be followers, but they'll be leaders. They'll lead their friends and family and peers toward the things of God, in the things of God, and away from the things of hell. Father God, may not one person from the sound of my voice lead this congregation today and go to hell. Jesus. In Jesus' name, get a hold of every person in this house. And help us, oh God, to have a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you keep your heads bowed today? Keep your eyes closed.